what does GM owe the country now? GM owes the country doing its best to compete. Obviously, if GM had developed better products and done a better job, uh, they wouldn't have to do this. And that's something uh, that we can regret. But if GM ostriches doesn't contain costs and turns itself into a situation like GE, that's not going to do its shareholders any good. That's not going to do its workers any good. And that's not going to do um, America any good. So in general, I think companies that have more capacity than there is demand for their products can't ostrich with respect to that reality. And I think responsible of the pres presidents of the United States don't demand that uh, they do that. Is this a time when G GM should be giving big executive bonuses? No. And if they are, it's deplorable. Is this a time when GM should be engaging in a big increase in imports? Uh, no. And if they are, that's problematic as well. But at least as this was presented, it was a response to very substantial excess capacity relative to what the demand for their products was. And we can wish that they had better products. And so there was uh, more demand. We can start making the necessary investments as a country in the kinds of infrastructure, the kinds of educated workforces, the kinds of science that are necessary to help our companies uh, compete. But ostriching with respect to uh, reality, I don't see how that serves any national purpose. Secretary Summers, it's interesting to hear you make the comparison to GE, another long-standing American manufacturer. It sounds like you have some strong thoughts on, on what's going on at that company as well. No, I, I, I just know that that's a company that seems to have not recognized uh, reality and not faced up to painful problems for a long time. And then all of a sudden, there are a lot of chickens coming home uh, to uh, roost. In general, I think it's better when companies recognize their problems. And if companies have large amounts of capacity and they're not able to sell the product, you've got to do something about that situation. If you can't just invest for the sake of continuity. Indeed, you know, I made a pretty careful study of what it was that drove GM into bankruptcy. And, in the first place in 2009. And a lot of it had to do with the recession and the financial crisis, but a lot of it had to do with the fact that its management ignored the signals that market were, markets were sending and kept investing in doing the same things in the same way, even where there wasn't demand, and built up large quantities of debt uh, while they made investments that were ultimately unproductive. And if they'd faced into that problem earlier, we might not have had that bankruptcy. So I don't think we want to be taking the position as a country that uh, our big companies should be like uh, Chinese state enterprises um, where they're kept afloat independent of economic uh, reality. Secretary, we expect to hear uh, from Fed Chair Jay Powell in just a couple minutes. I wonder uh, what your latest thoughts are on the situation that the Fed finds itself in with its uh, independence being challenged by uh, the statements that the president has been making uh, about the Fed's move to raise interest rates, uh, most notably his recent statement basically that he regrets uh, Jay Powell being the Fed Chair in the position that he is now. You know, it's interesting that the best appointment the president has made is the one he says that he regrets. <laughs> Jay Powell's a very good person uh, to be at the Fed and is doing a very good job. And it reflects very poorly on the president that he regrets one of his uh, wisest acts. But I'm not sure which is more true, that the president's statement is irresponsible or that the president's statement is counterproductive from its own uh, point of view. Look, I'm someone who supports more dovish policy in general at the Fed for a variety of reasons. But it becomes much more difficult to adjust policy in a dovish direction at the Fed when you've got a president who's outdoing Richard Nixon in terms of shrill demands on uh, the Fed and 
it's hugely important to its long-term credibility that the Fed demonstrate uh, its independence. And that's going to make it harder to adjust in a dovish direction if that's what the Fed uh, wants to do. So the president's acts here are irresponsible in the sense of a kind of political intrusion. I mean, that's a bit of a pattern, frankly, with this president, political intrusion in the Justice Department, political intrusion in the military, political intrusion in uh, the in in the central bank. So it's irresponsible. But in this case, it's going to be actively counterproductive in terms of the fact that it's harder for the Fed to move in a dovish direction if that's the direction right. that they choose to.